Jordan, the lens we're reviewing today has got to be like a world's first. I've never heard of this before. It's an incredible like standard zoom, 28 to 70 f2 all the way through. I mean, this is like, we're on the cutting edge, man. That thing's been out for like two years. What? Welcome back to Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. And all cold open jokes aside, yes, we've known about this lens for quite a long time. It's not a surprise. So why are we only now looking at it? Well, a couple of reasons. I mean, yeah, you know, we you know had a hard time getting it. They couldn't really get us one to play with right away. So first off, special thanks to our friends at the camera store for hooking us up with the lens today to test. But also more importantly, we were able to test this lens earlier, but we had cameras like the EOS R, RP. You know, it doesn't have a high resolution sensor. And, this lens doesn't have any optical stabilization, so we really wanted to wait for a body that would have IBIS to see what this lens can really do. So now today, we've got the Canon EOS R5, we have IBIS in this body, we've got a high resolution 45 megapixel sensor, so seems like a good time to now visit this lens and see what it can really do. Now, of course, with the Canon 28 to 70 being an F2 maximum aperture, it's gonna make this lens pretty big and fairly heavy. 95 millimeter filter thread in the front. It's nice that you actually can still get that size, but they are big and they are expensive typically. You've got a nice control ring here. I don't mind the click as a photographer, but Jordan's gonna hate this. You can't change that yourself. You'd have to actually send it back to get that changed over to a silent turn. Nice manual focus, nice zoom ring, no issues there. Autofocus, manual focus, click. And you do actually have a zoom lock switch, which is pretty atypical on a 28 to 70 lens, but that's because you got big heavy elements and it's nice to keep them from moving on you. Now, how much does the lens weigh and how burdensome is it gonna to be to carry around? Well, this lens isn't that bad. It's 1.4 kilograms. That's about less than three quarters of a knock. Not too bad. You know, the weight of a liter and a half of water or I don't know, a bag of potatoes or a human brain. So if you're walking around the street and you find a human brain really heavy to carry around, then besides the other problems you have, you probably shouldn't get this lens. Now autofocus speed is something we were concerned about with this lens because it's a lot of glass that has to move. And a lens like this, you want to be versatile, quick focusing, even in low light situations. But happily, this lens moves its elements with authority, very quick, very snappy. You know, I think if you're doing weddings or documentary work, or even in low light situations, this lens focuses very nicely and you're to be pleased with the performance. Now anytime we have lenses that kind of extend into a normal or wide angle focal range, we like to test for sun stars, especially useful for people doing landscape photography. And we we're actually really happily surprised by the 28 to 70. I mean, Canon are known for delivering lenses with good sun star performance. As you can see here, beautiful sun stars, really delicate tines on each star, really dramatic looking. So I like that a lot. And I think if you are shooting landscapes, this is gonna be a nice lens for you in that regard. Now let's talk about Loca, that longitudinal chromatic aberration. That's where you get those color fringes in the foreground and background out of focus areas. We were worried about this lens being that it has such a wide aperture, complicated formula. We thought we might get quite a bit of loca, but as you can see here in the samples, there's some. You see a little bit of magenta coloration in the foreground, a little bit of green cyan in the background, but overall very well controlled. Wasn't anything I was too worried about. Well, folks, as usual, that does it for our field test portion of the video. When you see me again, we'll have evaluated the photos on the computer and we'll give you our final thoughts. Hey everyone, it's Jordan to talk about using this lens for video work. And on paper, a 28 to 70 F2 sounds like a dream video lens, but there is a little weirdness. F2, you're gonna be pulling focus all the time. And when you do that, you're gonna notice that at 28 millimeters and at 70 millimeters, there's quite a bit of breathing on this lens. Uh, it actually zooms a little bit while you're pulling focus and it can be distracting in some shots. Now, don't worry, I'm sure that there's eventually going to be a full frame cinema version of this that's breathing corrected, but it's probably also gonna set you back about $14,000. 
All right, we're back. We've had a chance to take a look at the files. Let's talk about Bokeh first, because of course the 2870 is an F2 zoom, and that means you do have an opportunity for a nice shallow depth of field. But what's the quality look like? Well, first thing I'm gonna say is just the natural bokeh from out of focus to in focus to out of focus scan, I found beautiful. I mean, I think it's very smooth, uh, very clean, so I like that. Now, when it comes to specular highlights, that's a different story. They're not terrible, but they're not great either. I mean, you can see here, first off, we're not getting a soap bubble effect, that's nice, but we are getting some onion rings in the bouquet. It's kind of messy looking in there. Uh, when we stop down the aperture, things get a little bit polygonal. We're not getting nice, smooth, round shapes. Now, if I was shooting portraits, uh, that's fine. I don't care. You don't have specular highlights in the background very often. But uh, if I was doing things that specifically had specular highlights, like nighttime cityscapes, traffic lights, street lights in the distance, that kind of stuff, yeah, it's not going to blow you away. I spent the whole day shooting outside a lot towards the sun, bright light sources, and I didn't notice any major loss of contrast or ghosting problems. So that's nice. You know, if you're going to shoot backlit portraits and stuff, I think this lens is going to do a good job. But what about sharpness? Well, let's take a look here. First shooting 70 millimeters in the center wide open. Not bad. I mean, it's not going to be as sharp as, say, a fixed prime lens that would shoot an f2 aperture, but I was still pretty pleased with the performance out of the zoom. When we look at the corners here, though, you can see that there is a little bit of softness in smearing. As well, there is some vignetting throughout all the shots on this lens in the corners, especially wide open. When we stop down our lens to f5.6, you can see the corners, honestly, at 70 millimeters, don't improve that much just a little bit. So let's take a look at the 28 millimeter range. I feel like this particular lens we had did a better job at 28 millimeters as far as resolution goes. Shooting in the center at f2, again, very acceptable, not bad at all. When we stop down to 5.6, it just gets even better. In the corners here, you can see, I feel they hold up a little bit better at 28 millimeters. Shooting at f2 though, you can see they're still a little bit soft. When we shoot 5.6, specifically focused in the corners, you can see that they get noticeably better, but they still Still never get tack sharp. And again, there's that vignetting. So overall, I'm very happy with this lens for sharpness. It did better than I expected, but those corners do tend to get a little bit soft and there's not much you can do about improving those. I think the main point here to get across is that there's no other lens like this right now that we can even compare this to. And Jordan and I actually expected this lens to be far worse than it was because we figured there'd be a ton of compromises making an F2 zoom like this. But really the fact of the matter is things like distortion and vignetting are easily corrected. Loca, which is hard to correct, was mild. And this lens performed very nice in ways that are more artistic. Beautiful sun stars, great flare control, uh, soft bouquet. So the only real downsides that we saw were less than spectacular specular highlights and a little bit of softness in the corners. But we use this on a 45 megapixel sensor and I'm glad we did. And I feel like the shots we got of this lens, especially a lot of them being shot wide open, were still very sharp, very acceptable. And I was pleased with the image quality that I got out of it. So I thought that this would be a really niche specialized tool, but it turns out I'd actually be happy using this lens as a walk around general purpose 28 to 70 lens. You know, and that brings natural comparisons then to what about the 24 to 70 2.8? Well, that is definitely a little bit lighter and more compact. And that will play a part if you're gonna walk around with this lens for a long period of time. But I didn't find the weight that problematic. Uh, also, this 28 to 70 didn't really have any optical compromises that I was really worried about. So, you know, I would use this as a walk around lens as long as I had a body that had IBIS built into it. That would be a big plus for me. Yes, it is significantly more expensive than the 24 to 70, but 30% more for twice as much light, not that necessarily bad a compromise to make. So I could absolutely see somebody doing night photography, concert shooting, wedding photography, street photography, any sort of documentary style photography where you might want to get really shallow depth of field or you need faster shutter speeds because you're dealing with motion blur in low light situations. I think this lens would absolutely fit the bill. I hope this video helps you guys decide if this lens is the right tool for you. I was actually very impressed by it and very surprised uh, by how versatile it actually was. As usual, do leave your comments below so that we can know what you think about this lens and about our video Videos, please do subscribe and like to the channel. We'd really appreciate that. Check out deepreview.com. The link's in the description below for our sample gallery from this lens. And we hope to see you all next time on Deep Review TV. So we're doing a lot of shooting downtown and I'm just like, why does Calgary smell so much like a toilet right now? And then I realized we just had Stampede. We haven't had any rain to wash any of it away, man.